Alright, I got this uh, relief of a cat on the internet. I flattened it out a little bit since I don't have a, um, a five degree, uh, five axis uh, mill. I feel like the 3D depth, like if you were to scale it here on the Z axis, it's probably like kind of like this originally where I have more depth to it. But uh, if you flatten it out a little bit, it's better for, I mean, I don't know, I don't do these a lot, but I would imagine for a three axis mill, it's going to give you like a better result if you flatten it out a little more. Um, I went ahead and actually already did a, uh, calculated a path for it. It takes a while to calculate a path, so it's hard to record. <laughs> Um, I had to extend the distance around it by this five millimeters here, or else it was cutting off this part of the leg and its nose up in the front there. So by adding that extra buffer, it, it makes sure it gets all the way around it. Uh, one, let's say, drop it two millimeters. at a time and that'll give me a more accurate it won't just try to I mean my machine is not the 3018 Pro can't just dig down in there and cut all that out in one pass like that <laughs> unfortunately alright so that's saying it'll be an hour and 40 minutes to do it looks like a bunch of passes I noticed the V-cutter that I'm using, uh, the original settings were 60 degree angle, and I, I was thinking that this cutter diameter was talking about the tip, but I realized it's actually talking about the diameter of the whole cutter, and uh, this is the angle of the end, which was at 60, um, it definitely is not a 60 degree uh, tip, mine is almost exactly like this one here, uh, eighth inch. I believe that's probably close to three millimeter. I don't know, it's about three millimeters. Still going. Yeah, the process we got demoted. Watch the Marcus while you wait. That's uh that's actually an important step. You should always watch Arcus while you wait. I was changing this around a bit, trying to get the time to be a reasonable time and get the uh, cut to be a little more well defined. I think you can see I was looking at that paw before. You can still see that that's a paw it looks like with the uh, model out of there. <laughs> so that's uh, it's 0 0.6 uh, millimeters between tool paths and uh, 0 0.25 millimeter step down it is between uh, layers and I also sped up the feed rate here to uh, I change it here and uh, also here I think you have to change both to uh, 500 millimeters per minute uh, which is a bit fast but I'm pretty sure that the uh, the V cutter blade I'm going to be using will, will be able to handle that. So hopefully this estimate is correct because if it's twice as long as six hours, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, well, seven hours. I definitely won't actually be finishing it if it's going to be uh, much longer than that. It took close to 14 hours for this process to finish. I didn't think it was going to take that long. Um, fortunately. 
It was kind of quiet, due, I think, probably in part to the shallow passes it was making. Um, so even though it went until like 2 a.m., <laughs> um, I still was able to finish it. Yeah, I really didn't like the way the uh, the V-carve bits, the little uh, knife bit that comes with the uh, CNC mill that I had. Um, I didn't like the way it, it did the uh, like the relief kind of uh, milling. It left a lot of those tiny little lines everywhere. Um, I'm trying this uh, ball nose bit. I'm using a two millimeter bit. I'm also having to do this meander style. If you look here, uh, meander zigzag. And so instead of it going up and then stopping and lifting and coming all the way back down and going up again, it's going to actually just mill back and forth the whole time. So the spindle is going to be on for a lot longer. I'm hoping, uh, I mean, it is cold time of the year, so that'll help. But hopefully the spindle won't get too hot. Uh, besides that, uh, I'm using that same distance between tool paths. Um, I am having it just dig into the whole piece of wood and mill it out. I'm having it move at 100 millimeters per minute, and I'm having it do the whole thing in one pass. Just mostly as a test. I'm going to do video of it to see if the spindle moves around a lot. Um, it Hopefully it does a good job, but we I'm going to find out. Um, see if I can maybe push it faster than... Uh, Actually, I have it at 200 millimeters per minute right now, so that'll that'll really be a test of it. Um, it's saying it's going to take an hour and a half, so it probably will take three hours. That's the way that's been working. I'm going to mill that and see how that works. Uh, you know, another thing I should mention is I have it at 2,000 RPM. Um, I don't think I think the way this really works is if you have it set to the the max. Is 2000 and then you tell it to do 2000 it's just setting the percentage I think it's like a pulse width modulation thing where it has like a 0 to 125 like an 8-bit kind of um, uh, setting so if, you, if it's set the max at 2000 and you say 2000 then it'll do the max percentage well, I don't want to do this outside if possible since I want to be able to do it as long as I want without having to worry about neighbors um, you know, I don't want it to be noisy in my living space either, so I'm actually in my laundry room here. And I have a little grow tent in here, which I think makes a nice little enclosure. I don't think it's going to do much to stop the noise. It'll probably stop the noise a little bit, but it's mostly good to catch the dust, because these grow trays, uh, grow tents come with these trays. So that'll be really nice for dust removal. I'm thinking I can like brush off the machine, get the machine out, and then take the whole tray to a trash can or something. Maybe do that outside. It's even got a little pouch for tools there. And I'm just running the power cable and the USB out the top. So if I wanted to use a uh, like a laptop for sending like some of the laser code or something like that, I could just plug that in, and put it on top there. Keep it pretty dust free on top. These ball nose bits performed really well. It's a two millimeter diameter and the flutes are about 15 millimeter deep. So it's able to mill out the whole entire relief in one pass. I have one millimeter and 1.5 millimeter ball nose end mills, but the flutes are not long enough to do this in one pass. So I need to do like a roughing pass first. And I don't think you're really able to do that in blender cam. Not that I was able to figure out. Um, I'm looking into using um, some of the tools that are bundled in this Linux distribution. Uh, it's called CAE Linux. Um, it's got all these um, tools for CAM and stuff built into it, and it's nice because some of the libraries that you're going to need for some of the tools they have are not existing in modern, uh, like the latest Linux distributions. So if you get that one, everything will be bundled together. It'll be nice and easy. Um, I had to move the clamp on this, unfortunately, because I put it in a bad spot. And the machine was about to hit it, and then I wasn't paying attention uh, at the end there when one of the clamps fell off and the, the wood began to shift a little. Um, fortunately, it barely affected the relief much at all, it looks like.
The results I got with the ball nose end mill was much closer to the results I was looking for. Uh, being able to do it all in one pass too was a huge plus. It only took two hours to do that uh, com compared to the 14 hours the five pass V-carve bit strategy took, so, uh, you know, much better.